Hello, everyone. Welcome back to The Film Pod. Hi. So, yeah, we're going to be reviewing Star Wars, The Last Jedi today. Um, and, yeah, so this movie really has stirred up a lot of controversy, a lot of uh, backlash. Um, some people seem to really like it. Some people seem to hate it. Uh, it's definitely one of the most divisive Star Wars movies so far, I would say. That, I don't see why it's divisive, though. Like the, I mean, I don't see it either, but yeah. I mean, we'll get into that though. Let's uh, before we do anything else, let's do a quick one two minute review, no spoilers for anyone <laughs> who hasn't seen it yet. Right, and then we'll go into the spoilers because that's what the majority of this review is going to be. Yeah, so so Ivan, give your take of uh, the film, no spoilers. I'll do the same right after. Then we'll get into the the meaty stuff. Okay, um, I thought it was decent. I didn't think it was really good. I didn't think it was bad. I just thought it was just like a fairly decent movie um if you like the characters in the force awakens you'll like the characters in this one um if you like the world of star wars in the force awakens you probably will like it in this one um i'm no i'm being very general right now but i'm trying not to spoil anything um because the more i want to talk about the more i'll spoil things so yeah yeah it was decent what did you what did you think jackson you know, I think for the most part, I agree. I think this movie is definitely one that I'd say whether or not you're a big Star Wars fan or just a casual fan, I'd say you should go see it and decide for yourself what you think. Um, but so uh, many what, people hate it. Well, it's that's the thing, so though, funny. is it's, it's really the hardcore fans that are really having problems with it um, because there are things in this movie that might not 100% line up with the canon that we've uh, known for years. Obviously, Disney has made some changes. Um, and there are some character decisions that, while I won't say are bad, they definitely are um, different from what most people were expecting. So I, I think it's one of those, like, I really do think that most casual fans, anyone who, like, really liked The Force Awakens will probably go to this one and think it's great. Um, as a general note, though, uh, I will say I think the film's a little too long. I think there was about 30 minutes or so that could have easily been cut out. Um, See, that's where I'm going to kind of disagree with you because I understand that it is a two-and-a-half-hour Star Wars movie, making it the longest in the entire franchise. Yep. But when I watched it, it kind of went by fast. My only thing with that movie, though, and so I think this is the part where we're going to get into spoilers, so spoiler warning from here on out. Spoiler so gonna... warning! <laughs> so, anyway. um, <laughs> So, when I was watching the movie for the first 15 to 20 minutes, I was like, all right, this is really well done. This is really well shot. This is a lot of really great action. And then 30 minutes pass. I'm like, all right, this is really, this isn't great action. And then 40 minutes pass and, four, and 50 minutes pass. I'm like, all You're right. Like, we're in the same scene after Whoa, all this. Whoa, what? <laughs> yeah. The, it uh, it kind of got tired. It got it, a little, it, my, my head was like drags. throbbing a little bit. I'm not joking. My head was throbbing just a bit because it just went on for so long. But even though that whole scene went on for so long, I still felt like it was entertaining in the least. That yeah. I didn't feel like two and a half hours was going yeah, by. No, well, and I don't say it was too long in a, like, oh, man, I was really bored way. Um, you know, not like your experience with Coco. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that at the at the very end, I guess. Um, but, you know, I think just the, the opening sequence... Ki- well, the opening sequence kind of goes into the middle of the movie, like... It, it's not one of those opening sequences like Revenge of the Sith or um, Empire Strikes Back where it's like the first, you know, 20 minutes or this was one sequence that is related to the main plot but definitely just sort of kicks the movie uh, in to full gear. You know, this this opening sequence kind of just goes straight into the next sequences after it. Um, but I think, I think, yes, it starts off very energetic, very good. Um, the, Until you realize that's going to be the majority of the movie. Yeah, it, that, that it's going to kind of follow the well, and we're talking about really what I think is considered the B plot. You know, the now that we can say spoiler, you know, the Poe, uh, Finn, Leia, all all of them. You know, that that sort of B plot um, definitely kind of drags in the middle. Um, whereas the stuff with Ray and Luke and uh, Kylo Ren, with Ray being trained, but also not really trained by Luke and Luke teaching her the ways of the Jedi and why he believes they should end. Um, and, and getting into that connection between Ray and Kylo Ren. 
I think that part of the movie uh, is that's re- the strongest really part. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, it is the main story. Um, Which I will say, and a lot of people are gonna hate me for this, but that scene when Luke and Ray are when Luke is training Ray is a ripoff of the scene from The Empire Strikes Back when Yoda is training Ray. But it's Yoda done, doesn't train Ray. Yoda Yoda's training Luke. You know, okay. what, I, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I know. What you mean. Um, but it's done better in The Last Jedi than it is done in The Empire Strikes Back. The one in The Empire Strikes Back is so boring which scene I are said you referring it, to um when yoda is training luke in the swamp with the lifting the rock thing yes it's so boring see i don't, I don't find it boring but uh i don't so know you, you you don't really like empire strikes back that much it's um, decent i mean it's but i mean it's, it's my really, favorite it's really good the series. i mean it's not like amazing but yeah okay i will give uh i wouldn't say it was boring but i will say that um the pacing of the training in this film is uh, probably better than the pacing in oh, yeah. Empire Strikes Back. Without a doubt, the, definitely. The difference, though, I think, is that Empire Strikes Back did show us... It, it took time to show us Luke and Yoda training. This movie doesn't really take much time to show Rey and Luke training. And th- it is kind of an issue, I think, that uh, Rey really doesn't get really any training at all other than uh, like one, two brief lessons with Luke. Um and yet she's so powerful and is able to take Kylo Ren in a fight. Even in this movie, I th- in the last one, it made sense why she was able to to, to um, match him because he was injured when they fought. You know, he had been shot in the chest uh, by Chewbacca, um, and he had just killed his father. So there was there was stuff holding him back in that fight. Um, this Ray really, you know, the timeline for these movies. It seems like this is only supposed to be a week or two after Force Awakens. I don't see how she is powerful enough. Or even skilled enough at this point to be able to fight Kylo Ren, and I mean, yeah, maybe the movie wouldn't be as interesting if she was uh, still uh, having to learn, and 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 maybe Ryan Johnson didn't want to retread too much old ground with uh, Empire Strikes Back. Well, that was the thing. Um, I know, like Ryan Johnson as a director, and I know some of the movies he's done. Like you've, you've met him, you guys. Uh, like you, I know you guys get coffee every Tuesday. Yeah, I eat coffee and pastries with him, and then we go back to bed and sleep together. So that's how Whoa. that's how much I know him. Yeah. Dude, you and Ryan Johnson, who knew? Yeah, Ryan Johnson. Yeah, he has a very nice Johnson, by the way. Okay, <laughs> get, to, get to the point you were saying about Ryan Johnson. I'm sorry, I, I couldn't I And couldn't not resist. his Johnson. <laughs> yeah, but I've seen Brick, and I thought it was really good. And Yeah, I've he's seen, a good director. No, he's a really competent director. And that's when I, when I realized he was going to actually do this movie. I was like, oh, wow, what's he going to pull off with this one? And it didn't feel like one of his movies. Like, it just felt... There was well, nothing special in the directing. Yeah, it was probably kind of it was like, studio uh, run. Yeah. I would say. I mean, that's but the how we can is, assume most of these are. They got like, but they got like a guy, like pretty much, to direct this. Like not yeah. just like J.J. Abrams, who's had like experience directing movies with a sci-fi, a heavy sci-fi element in them. But they just got a dude who's made really one sci-fi movie with Looper. Yeah. Um, and then he made like a crime movie with teenagers which is brick mm-hmm. and now he's directing like the star wars movie he doesn't have many movies under his belt yeah. that are like well and this movie didn't have a very distinct style in my opinion it was very basic yeah it was you know not bad um, not bad just basic i thought the, i thought the shot composition overall was good i mean there was uh no real complaints um i i did have one complaint on a technical side and that i feel like this movie kind of went into some prequel territory in terms of just so many CGI <laughs> monsters and everything, everything was very clearly CGI except for some of the like more real looking locations. Um, you know, I'm not not that that's even a bad thing really. But uh, what I liked about Force Awakens was that they used a lot of practical stuff. Uh, a lot of those monsters were practical. A lot of the sets were practical. Um, and I think some of that was still there, but it didn't seem like they had as much of a focus on that this time. Maybe they had less time. They wanted to, you know, get it out quicker but I, I definitely think it could have used uh some more of that old school kind of star warsy uh effects and not not quite as much the uh prequels like like luke literally milks a cgi uh creature yeah, at one point just drinks the milk like that's felt totally like the prequels like it just kind of came out of nowhere and it was kind of weird um i didn't hate it i mean it wasn't a, you know it wasn't an insult to the character of luke skywalker oh no you know but it, it was kind of like okay well this is random and 
why why are we uh, eating up random time in the movie to dedicate to Luke's uh, schedule of milking weird things and uh, <laughs> like fishing with a giant pole, like you know, because um, there was so much uh, stuff they they could have gotten into in the Ray and Luke scenes, and they did. They got into some good. They got into some good stuff, but. Um, Definitely, like it's kind of it kind of drags at the beginning a little bit where it's like Ray is trying to convince Luke, oh, train me. Luke's like, go away, like all that kind of you know. I like the dynamic, but it, it takes a little while to. get It Luke goes on back. for way too long than it has to. Should have been and like then, a scene or two, and not like you know, oh, he's, he's still reluctant for he's, twenty you know. something minutes. But yeah. one of the things that I thought was the most annoying was this whole he said she said type battle between Kylo Ren and Ray. So there's this part of the movie where um, Snoke is like controlling their two minds mm-hmm. and having them talk to each other from like distant lands. And I'm not going to get too into it, but when they're talking to one another, they're trying to like side with each other. And so Kylo Ren will join Rey into defeating both sides, both dark and light. And mm-hmm. so it just, but it's just this whole thing where it goes into he said, she said territory where Luke tells Ray a story of how um, Kylo Ren caused him to be on the island, and then Lu- then Kylo Ren says, "No, that's not true. This is what happened." And then Luke goes back and says, "No, this is what happened." So it just got mm-hmm. too repetitive for me, and to like it was a whole kind of he said she said battle, and I just felt like it was just dragging on. It was just really somewhat immature, I guess, for a Star Wars movie. Maybe like we're going on. I mean, the immature overall for it dragging too many. What plot was immature overall. about it to you? I just felt like it just like it because like for the most part it had like Star Wars. It doesn't have like amazing writing, but it has like good writing to not overwrite a cliche. Even though it started some cliches. Well, um, the or- the original trilogy was pretty well written. Yeah, the prequels are pretty bad <laughs> when it comes to the writing. And and the new ones just playing it safe pretty much. Um, yeah, they but do, like they do play things safe a lot in these newer movies. Um. I think I think Force Awakens is probably more guilty of playing it safe, but I think they made it work in that movie. Yeah. This movie feels like I think the movie this movie as a whole I think really works, but yeah. uh, there's a lot of parts to it. It's kind of like a, it's like a car that like a car that runs well, but you know it, the AC doesn't work, the radio doesn't work, you know the uh, the you know need you need new tires. Like it's it fully functions as a film on its own, but like it's got little things in there that it's are got kind some of bumps annoying. in the road. Um, I think one thing that I don't like about this movie while comparing it to force awakens is I don't like the fact that, um, the, to me, these plots of these plots and these questions that JJ started in the first one, I feel, I feel like a lot of stuff in this one gets disregarded from the force awakens. And while I won't say that's a bad thing to me, a lot of these uh, little plot points come across as kind of sloppy because it's very clear that, JJ had a certain thing in mind with the Force Awakens, and then Ryan Johnson kind of took some of those ideas and was like, "Nah, nah, we'll change that." Like, See, and, and, it may, and it makes some inconsistencies. I kind of like that though. You know, no, no, no. Like, I, I'm not saying it's bad overall, but if we're, but when you're making a series of films, like I think from a one film to another standpoint, it, it's cool. But if we're talking a, cohe- a cohesive series, especially since JJ will be coming back in the third one, um, I think it, it just kind of. Um, seems inconsistent like they didn't really plan anything like like JJ just had these ideas and then they kind of didn't really f- f- go through like okay so I'll, I'll get to some of the things that didn't really add up a whole lot you know um Snoke gets killed off halfway through this movie I think the the twist of him getting killed is pretty cool um but he gets killed off in such a dumb bitch way he doesn't even notice that there's a lightsaber right next to him that's turning even though he's this like all powerful force person yeah um and, and the way he's all like, I am all powerful and I am all knowing and I am the best at the force. I am the Lord of Darkness. He's like, and you will do nothing that can stop me. And then Kylo Ren's like, you know nope. <laughs> and, and it's not- You know what would have been a better way to do that? What? Is if they didn't show the clip of him, of Kylo doing that. Yeah, if they no, unlimited that and then had him killed, it would be a much stronger scene. Yeah, no, I saw a review that was talking about that exact same thing, and I totally agree. I think that would have been a really cool twist, but it's like when you show us the twist, it's not as it much It ruins a twist. the twist. Exactly. Because um, I was watching that in the theater, and I'm like, oh, well, 
why are you showing me this? Now I know what's going to happen. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the other problems with Snoke, though, um, I think it's while. OK, I think Ryan Johnson has said that the reason he didn't give us any of Snoke's backstory or really tell us who Snoke is, is because he, he justified it by saying that they didn't do that for the em, the emperor in Return of the Jedi. And I say, while well, OK, fair enough. At the same time, though, that doesn't necessarily make the uh, it doesn't just because they did that in the originals doesn't make it good. You know, like as much as I love the original Star Wars movies, they're not perfect. And I mean, the character of the emperor, emperor, he's an awesome character. But like if the prequels hadn't happened, we wouldn't have known anything about him. And it's like we know a lot of stuff about a lot of these big characters in the series Um like generally for the most part the movies explain in enough detail about like who each character is and where they come from um so i don't you know i don't think that was a strong suit of the emperor's character in the originals i don't i i think snoke um while we didn't need an exposition dump about him you know we didn't need to know everything about him but like you know maybe who he is or uh at least like wh- like why like a little bit of why he's there would make I think a little more. Yeah, because like overall, he's. I'm no. I've said this from the Force Awakens. He's a boring character. Yes, like, and with a little more backstory, the, he could be a little more interesting. He could, yeah, but the thing is, if say in another dimension where you did not have Star Wars, mm-hmm. um, and then this movie came out, he'd be kind of an interesting character. But now that you have the context of Star Wars and the whole yeah. universe. You're like, oh, he's just like the Emperor. He's just from... a boring version of yeah. the Emperor. And he's really so you cliche. Compare, compare that. Yeah, he's really cliche, too. Um, I mean, like, I love Andy Serkis. And I I think, like, uh, the the parts where Snoke is just toying with Rey and just totally wrecking her shit, like, like, I think that's pretty cool. Like, he's kind of a badass. And then he gets taken out like a bitch with a lightsaber right next to him that he should have been able to sense. Yeah, well, I was kind of surprised, knows. like, he got taken out so early out of the movie. But him getting taken out of the movie is a good um, character moment for Kylo Ren, and that makes him a stronger character. Yeah. So I like that. I like that going forward, Kylo Ren is the supreme leader, and that's different from the Darth Vader story. You know, Darth Vader also betrayed his master, but you know, then he was dead. I mean, you know, the that's where the story ended. So having Kylo Ren betray Snoke in the second film, I think, is pretty cool. Um, so okay, so we're, we're talking also things that didn't necessarily add up from the Force Awakens. Um, what do you think about the whole Ray's parents thing? How they ended up being nobody? Um, I'm fine with it. I mean, no, I, here's, I the th- th- here's the thing. Okay. When the Force Awakens came out, people speculated yeah. that her parents may be someone like within a main character in the series, but mm-hmm. in reality, it turns out to be no one. And then I think people were mad about that because they expected her parents yeah. to be someone. And in what, reality, it's yeah. like fine. It's almost like R- Ryan Johnson was just like, hey. All of your expectations, I'm not going to meet any of them. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. No, and and he's got he's got some balls to sort of say like, oh, yeah, oh, I'm, I'm going to make the that's... film I want to make and I think that's great. That's uh, we don't I love have that. To, we don't have to please all the fans. I will say two things though about Ray's parents. Uh, number one, while I agree with you that people got way too into uh speculate being speculative about it, um I think that's on the fans. I don't think that's necessarily on the writers. I will say though they make a big deal in The Force Awakens about Rey not knowing who her parents are. And it's a such a big part of her character that she, like, because her only real internal struggle throughout most of these films so far um, is just, who are my parents? Who are my parents? Like, she's obsessed with it. So I think the, the reason people speculated was because they were making such a big deal to her character. Um, but at the same time, them being nobody, like, you know, I, I don't think that's uh, necessarily bad. Um but I do have a, a, a theory that J.J. Abrams and Ryan Johnson had two different ideas going there. I think J.J. wanted her to be somebody's daughter, and I think Ryan Johnson didn't. But with J.J. directing the next film, I think it's totally possible that... Uh, Maybe. Well, but here's the thing. Kylo Ren could have easily been lying there about who her parents are because we don't see anything about them. We don't really get a whole lot of evidence. He just kind of tells her, your parents are nobody. And like, so he could have just been using that to manipulate her and it'd be interesting to see if that's where it goes. If not, I, you know, I'd say either go somewhere with it or be done with the whole parents arc, just move on and focus on her character. Because even though I really like Daisy Ridley, um, and I like her in the role, uh, I feel like, I feel like Ray 
um, doesn't have a whole lot going on as a character, especially now that the whole parents thing is done because, um, you know, towards the, towards the end of the film, really the main conflict is between Luke and Kylo and Ray doesn't really have anything to do at the end, except she lifts some rocks, but it's like, if she's the protagonist, <laughs> like it should be her story. And, you know, so far, I don't know if it's really been her story. You know, she is, she is an active protagonist and she is doing things and taking action. Um, and I like that, but, uh, you know, it's not really been her story yet. Like it was Luke's story in the originals, you know, yeah. because in, was it really in, anyone's because, because, was it really anyone's like soul story though in any of the new movies? Like I, I would one say, person's soul. I would say in the Last Jedi, it's uh, Luke and Kylo, and kind of Ray. I know, but like no, like because you know how like in the originals, it's Luke, 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 mm-hmm. Luke. There's not one soul person that, what the story is about in the new. Yeah, ones. in the new ones, you're right. You're there not, really isn't yeah. one soul. Uh, it's just character. kind of a collection. Yeah, and that's not mm-hmm. always bad. Um, but no. I think I think uh, if we had a more like okay, because clearly there, I think there'd be a stronger the, like connection to a character yeah, if it was clearly like, one the soul protagonist person. is Ray. And then kind of also Kylo. And then Finn is like the next most important character. Even though he doesn't really get that much important things to do in this one. Um, that's the problem I had is I, I feel like uh, Finn... Well, I liked the stuff with his character. And I, I, I felt like uh, his whole arc with Rose was kind of rushed. You know, it was like she wasn't even a character in the last movie. Then they meet in this one and now she's in love with him. And will that lead to a love triangle thing with them? Like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't really care. It, yeah, I don't know what it is. Like, shows and movies, they're just like, we'll just add this new character who doesn't yeah. really do anything. And like, like Rose, like I understand, like she's a well-written character that has nothing to do. That's like the best thing I can. Yeah, like she's got it. she's got motivation. She's got a personality. Um, she's got a good backstory. I think the thing with her sister was mm-hmm. it was interesting. Um, and I actually noticed uh, rewatching Force Awakens that uh, her sister is one of the pilots in that movie. Yeah, so it was kind of cool that they actually did connect her in some way to that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it felt like kind kind of felt like another oh, a different director, throw a new character in, like you know, kind of thing. We'll make it different, you know. Um, sort of like Laura Dern's character who just gets thrown in. What Doesn't was that really with be- that purple hair? I don't know. It's so uh, she's Star Wars, different galaxy. She, she was good in the movie. I'm not gonna say she wasn't. She just. It was just the her character wasn't written well though. Yeah, because her character was coming across as this like sort sort of villainous. Like she it was it was almost like I thought she was gonna betray them and it, have it turn out she worked for the first order, and then they're just like that wouldn't no. make any sense though at all. It would make more sense than the way they did it because why mm. else would she be keeping all that information from Poe? That's she, true. Yeah, and then well, and the thing is, is she hints that she and Leia are friends. We've never seen this character before, and then when Leia gets better. Um, after Mary Poppins, you know, <laughs> we had to mention it at some point. Yeah. Um, after Leia gets better, Leia's all like, my dear friend, thank you so much for all you've done. And I'm like, I've never seen this woman. She's never been in any of the other movies. She wasn't in Force Awakens. Like, like how, like, how are they just, oh, we were friends, but we're just going to mention it. Like, they probably, I'm, it's just kind of lazy. I mean, I'm just, I think she, Rain Johnson knew someone who knew someone. It was one of those things. Yeah, Laura Dern's like, I need to be in this movie, and Ryan Johnson's like, okay, well, you can. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to we'll it, just kill off Admiral like... Akbar, and you can be in that role. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's a trap. They're gonna kill me. Okay, so my one last thing I wanted to say of things from Force Awakens that didn't quite add up in uh, Last Jedi. People are complaining about Luke's character, how he's, you know, the moment where he's, you know, thinks about killing Kylo and how he. Uh, how Luke's a coward and he doesn't want to go back and all this, you know, I'll get to that in a second. I, I think I, I fundamentally disagree with most of those uh, complaints about Luke's character. I really liked Luke and Mark Hamill a lot in this film, but in the force awakens, Luke leaves behind a map so they can find him if they need him. When Ray shows up to get him, cause they need him in this movie. He's just like, no, go away. Like, it's like, why did you leave the map if you didn't want to be found, didn't want to be bothered, if you wanted to die? Like, unless he changed his mind, but that just seems kind of sloppy, <laughs> you know, um, to be like, I'm leaving this map here with R2-D2 just in case you uh, need me to come back. And he's like, you know, they need him. And he's like, yeah. I'm not coming back. Like, you know, that seemed like an inconsistent thing. Like, you know, maybe if JJ had done this one, maybe 
Luke would have had a different uh, outlook on it or he would have actually just like trained Ray regularly. But I don't know. I mean, like that is definitely an inconsistency between films. But other than that, like I really like Luke in this movie. Yeah. Like, he's a good like this is, this yeah. is Mark Hamill's best performance as that character, because even though I love Luke Skywalker and the originals, like he's, he's a good protagonist, but he's not like that deep of a character at all. Oh no. I feel like with this one, like, cause Luke in the original ones, he's, adventurous he wants to go out from where he lives and explore but we're, but we're seeing and then you a see young like, man versus an old man i know yeah like you're and you and you see luke mark hamill in this one and you're like oh this guy's been through some shit like yeah he's exactly seen a lot and so he's grown up with that and so he's has he has a lot of wisdom within himself and wisdom but also he's still learning which yeah. is cool because I, I think they, you know, in and that's one thing I think is is more interesting about this than say Empire Strikes Back. Even though I'm not dissing Empire Strikes Back, fucking love that movie. But I will say, you know, Yoda was wise and all knowing, and for the most part, Obi Wan was too. But um, the fact that the mentor character in this film is He's as good. flawed, or maybe even more flawed than the protege, is actually pretty cool and interesting because I think that doesn't get showed often enough in movies. Um, a lot of times they'll show this master character as all knowing and maybe they learn a little lesson at the end. But like, I, I think the the struggle here is more about Luke than it is about Ray. I think Ray inspires hope in Luke. Um, and I think that's awesome. You know, the, the, the end scene where Luke uh, uh, basically saves everybody by distracting Kylo. Um, that's a, that's a great showdown between those two characters who we haven't really seen interact. Um, and it's a great, in my opinion, last moment of Luke Skywalker for that character before he finally does die. Um, and people had some issues with the fact that he dies because he gets worn out. Yeah, I didn't like that. But the th- I, I think it's justifiable because no one, in no other movie has anyone ever been able to fully project themselves onto another planet using the Force. So yeah. it would make sense that if he's doing this thing that really nobody has ever really done as far as we know... Um, it makes sense that it might use up literally all of his force energy and and it's not like he's dying from exhaustion so much as it could just be that he is fully turning his body over to the force just as Obi-Wan and Yoda did um, in the originals. So, uh, But I can see where it bothers people. I'm not saying you're wrong if you had issues with how they handled Luke's character because they take risks with Luke. Yeah. Which they might not have, like Ryan Johnson chose to do that and you know another director might not have done that. Uh, Luke, I mean, Mark Hamill even said in an interview, like, like at first he fundamentally disagreed with everything that was written for that character. And, you know, according to him, he grew to like it. You know, maybe he didn't always didn't always agree with it, but sounds like he, you know, from interviews, it seems like he was on board with how it ended up going and seemed happy with it. So I think that's great. Yeah. And also when the soundtrack comes out, it's going to be exactly two hours and 32 minutes. Because that was what? the only that was the the only thing I heard throughout the entire movie was the music. Really? To me, the music it and don't get me wrong, I love like John Williams and I love his John scores. Great. But I felt like the music was just played so much like throughout the movie. Yeah, there could have been some more silent moments. I think mm-hmm. um, some kind of like nice like more more silent more. Uh, mm-hmm. The, serene. Uh, yeah, more serene scenes during some of that. The, the entire like movie Luke. is just like, like. But when, it's this big Hollywood blockbuster with dramatic music. Yeah, it gave and then me those a, then those comic relief headache. moments that just are like, okay, like. So Benicio del Toro, let's talk about him. Yeah, he's uh, interesting, I guess. Okay, so thing is, like, I love Benicio del Toro as an actor. Like, he's been in movies I've loved for a pretty long time but him in this movie i liked him at first and i liked where his character was going and then you realize where it's going and i was like oh this is like pointless yeah he's kind of like lando from the empire strikes back except there's no like real redemption or anything or um i guess i guess that what they were trying to do with his character because a lot of this movie does deal with uh sort of gray, gray morality you know sort of being in the middle um, you know, it's kind of. I mean, it makes it's sense. kind of a like, theme that works with that they go with with Ray and Kylo Ren and Luke. Like there is kind of this grayness of morality that they're sort of. That's sort of a theme in this movie, um, and I think his character was sort of an example of that. In how he first seems like a total asshole, 
but then he gives Rose back her little pendant thing. He's really like yeah, but he has that moment where he seems nicer, and then he betrays them, and, and you know he sort of says he sort of acts like oh it doesn't matter good guys bad guys you're all kind of the same, and then Finn's like basically like no it's not, and Benicio de Torres is kind of like eh, maybe. <laughs> like it's kind of like what like if he was like brought on for a longer time and explained a little bit more it would have been much funnier but one thing i don't think makes sense after that after we're done with benicio del toro's character and that huge explosion happens mm-hmm. how come isn't this is the part of the movie that makes the least sense to me okay how come when everything explodes in where ray and finn and uh, not ray and finn finn and rose are being captured how come everyone dies but them? Also, that's great. Also, no, not only that, I, that had me rolling too. Also, before the explosion, they have handcuffs. After the explosion, yeah, no handcuffs. Like, no, come no, on, that was, no, 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 because the explosion was too powerful. It probably just broke them off. Oh, my handcuffs are. I'm free. Thank you, explosion. It was yeah, the force. Yeah, no, everybody else dies, but then also like behind the fire, the the rest of the stormtroopers are fine. Like. Uh, or Captain Phasma comes out and is like, you know, and, and Captain Phasma is this character who didn't really get much screen time in Force Awakens, and they're like, no, 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 don't, don't worry, don't worry, she's gonna, she's gonna be a big character in the rest of the trilogy. She's, she's just, in one scene of this movie, and is killed off, or I assume killed off. Because uh, I don't know the name, I don't know how to pronounce the name of the actress, but I think it's Gwen, some Gwendolyn Christie. Gwendol- I don't Gwendolyn, Gwendolyn, Gwendolyn Christie, yeah, yeah. She's a great actress. Yeah, like, she is. She's if you've great. ever seen Game of Thrones, mm-hmm. it's she's fantastic in that. And then yeah, she's a great actress. And she's and fantastic in this her. one. They she, I know. Her. Like she is the Boba Fett of this trilogy, though. Oh yeah, definitely. Even maybe even better, honestly. Well, I mean, obviously she's a better actor, but, but I mean, Boba Fett was kind of famous for just eh, like everyone. Everyone thought he was cool, but he just kind of went out like a bitch oh, yeah. and didn't really do anything. Um, and you know, that's the thing is. Um, she was a character I felt like they could have done more with in this movie, especially given that, like, this movie does really well, I think, with the established characters from Force Awakens. The characters from Force Awakens that are back in this movie, I think, are all better. I think Rey's more interesting. I think Finn's more interesting. I think Poe's more interesting. I think Leia's more interesting. Like, all the characters from the last film are, oh, especially Kylo Ren, too. He's not just a whiny, like, bratty, ah, oh, destroy yeah. everything. All these characters, I think, are better in this film. Yeah. But the new characters aren't that great. Um, I'll agree with you, Kyle Ren. I feel like Poe and Finn are the same. That's why I said, like, if you like the characters, that's why I say questioningly that if you like the characters in The Force Awakens, you might like the characters in this one because it's, it's a mixed bag. Like, well, okay. You will like Finn. You will like Rey. You will like Kylo Ren. You may not like Rose. You yeah. may not, yeah. So yeah, I th- I think Poe was more interesting in this movie because he actually kind of has an arc in the, yeah. in, in the Force Awakens. He doesn't really do anything after the first couple scenes. Like he just kind of comes back later and destroys Death Star 3.0. Like okay, um, and, and I really like Oscar Isaac in his role. Um, but I was just glad, oh, he's great. I was I was glad in this movie they gave him something to do. I mean, um, last one I think uh, I think JJ even said he was gonna like kill him off, and then was like, no, I like this guy. We'll just keep him. And then they don't really do much with him, but. Um, you know, like I said, though, I really think that the characters from the last film are done really well in this. I think I think they all pr- pretty much get to do some great things and expand on the characters, and uh, their conflicts become more interesting. But like I said, the new characters are all kind of they, they all feel half written. You know, Rose like is a is a well written character, but she doesn't really do anything. Uh, Laura Dern's character is just kind of inconsistently written. Um. Benicio del Toro also kind of inconsistently written. Like, yeah, it's almost like Finding Dory in a way, where like it's the same characters showing up, but you don't give a shit about any of the of the other new characters coming up in the movie. <laughs> it kind of reminded <laughs> yeah, me of that. That's kind of true. Um, I like Finding Dory, but yeah, it's, yeah, you can't compare those two movies. Like, I know I'm not comparing them like directly. I'm just saying like character wise, like how in general they'll bring characters, new characters that you don't care about, but you like the old characters. Yeah, it's it's one of those things though. It's like no, it's, it's kind of one of the struggles of filmmaking. Is I, I feel like if you introduce new characters, people are gonna be like, "Oh, I don't like those characters now." Like, but then if you like just have all the old characters, they're gonna be like, "You didn't do anything new with it." Like, you know, I think uh, Ryan Johnson especially 
in this movie. And he's even, he's even responded to criticism and has said, well, you know, it's kind of what to expect in this business. And as a Star Wars fan, I understand. Oh, no. But yeah. it's like there, there really was not no pleasing everyone. Uh, because if you make it too much like the original trilogy, then people are going to get really mad. I mean, um, you know, o- over the last two years, people went from loving The Force Awakens to kind of add eh, to some people hate it. I don't want know why they hate it, but, um, you know, I think... Because it's not like the original trilogy. Well, no, but they complain because it is like the original trilogy. <laughs> um, and I, I mean, I, I, I had some I mean, I mean, had some issues with Force Awakens just being... Um, Point for point, very, very much like A New Hope. But thing is, is um, Force Awakens had the excuse that it was bringing back an old franchise, and it was you know Star Wars for a new generation, whatever. Like, I'm cool with how it all turned out. Uh, Last Jedi, I'm glad they went in some different directions because when you look at the surface level of the story, on the surface, uh, it's a lot like Empire in terms of. You know, main character goes off to be trained by some old hermit. Um, side characters kind of are being chased down by the Empire the entire yeah. movie. Um, into you know, and uh, two of them start falling in love. And you know, I mean, like there's um, it, there are some beats yeah. to where it is like Empire. I knew that. I knew I was expecting that when overall. it came in. Yeah, like, I think that's yeah. to be expected. I mean, um, you know. <laughs> We're not going to get something like the prequels, uh, even though this was a little more like the prequels in a, a couple ways. Um, but in in some ways, it was more like the prequels in ways. Uh, even though they didn't expand on some things, I liked that Luke did expand on sort of the history of the Jedi and why he thought the Jedi were corrupt and uh, stuff from the prequels that, you know, we, we didn't really get much of anything in Force Awakens. You know, For- Force Awakens didn't give us really much context about anything. It was just kind of oh they're in the same situation they were thirty years ago. Uh, Last Jedi yeah. at least kind of in the, at least kind of says like well, you know the uh, first order is kind of taken over and <laughs> the resistance is how, how I guess another inconsistency is how was it in Force Awakens that they destroyed the main base of the first order the, the Star Killer base the Look. main thing that was their big destruction piece. The thing and is, yet, and yet, like that thing's destroyed. Yet it's like, nope. First order is winning. The resistance is losing. It's like, how does that make sense? What? what? Look, like, the thing is, no one cares. Nobody for, cares except for except for Star Wars fans. Yeah, but yeah, general audiences don't give a shit. Yeah, I understand. That's, that's the excuse. Nobody cares. <laughs> but people do care. Just not the people these movies are made for. Right. These movies are made probably more for general audiences than they are Star Wars fans because Star Wars fans. Or I mean, when I say Star Wars fans, I mean more hardcore Star Wars fans. They tend to like uh, more of the the EU stuff that existed before. Yeah, like I mean the Disney buyout. Yeah, I mean like the Star Wars. The thing is with Star Wars, like the universe, people think it's, a, it's an expansive universe that you can do a lot with. Anybody can make limited. anything up, and it can just kind of be whatever. Yeah, but it's actually fairly limited. In the films, not I mean yeah. not as much in the EU. The the thing yeah. is, is, the films are always trying to live up to the previous films. Um, mm. And the prequels were the prequels were different. The prequels threw a lot of really different ideas out there, and that I think was cool. But yeah, as films, as entertainment, those films fail. Yeah, I and mean, so I think this trilogy is kind of an almost an apology for that. And to a degree, you just kind of lose out on some originality when you're just trying to hit that nostalgia so hard. Yeah, like, but you know what? In the end, I feel like this was once again a decent star wars movie i agree i would i would give it decent out of 10 <laughs> i mean i mean i guess people what, what, who, what would our final ratings be uh i would give this one a six out of ten me too yeah That's i mean i think weird, anyone right? i mean i think mean, i think anyone who like who really hates it would probably just be a vegetarian yeah if yeah. you if you don't like this movie you're definitely a vegetarian yeah. Although there was that one scene with Chewbacca and the porgs where he's about to eat the meat and the pork stops him. So vegetarians might like that one scene. That one scene. Yeah, that, that scene is one scene four out of the two and a half hour movie. Two minutes out of the two and a half hour movie. That wasn't even two minutes. It was probably 30 seconds. 30 seconds. So vegetarians were probably like 30 seconds out of this movie. So all, all, all meat eaters, you will like, about, I would say about two hours, 29 and a half minutes. Vegetarians, you get those 30 seconds. Yeah. All right, so we've rated it. Uh, we've talked about it. Decent Star Wars movie. Go see it if you haven't already. Yep. Again, we spoiled it, so you know. Hope hopefully you clicked away if you haven't seen it. Um, and go see it again if you want to. I mean, I, I liked it better the second time, honestly, because I wasn't. My expectations weren't as uh, over the top.
Anyways, thank you for yeah. watching the film pod. Thank you for watching the film pod. Sorry we don't post that much, but you know we we're trying to do one a semester at least, so that we at least get you guys some content. Hope you guys enjoyed. This has been JT Dubs. This has been Ivan Lichtenstein. And you've been watching the film pod. Bum bum bum. See you guys next time. Next may, time. May the force be with you. May the force be with you. Bum bum bum. This is not the right signal. I know. Go. That, was, that, was a, that was a joke.